Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. On Earth Day, Mayor Michael Bloomberg released his vision of New York City over the next 25 years and the steps needed to get there. Joining us as he did last week is Deputy Mayor Dan Doktoroff, the chief architect and salesman of the Plan New York initiative. Welcome back, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Last week, we talked about, you know, the planning, the thinking that went into this, this plan New York, this greener, greater New York that looks at the next quarter century and where we need to be and where we might be otherwise. And we focused in on basically transportation and including congestion pricing. What I want to know is, how did you guys come up with the mollusks in the Gowanus? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Well, here, here's the issue. The I issue mean, to explain what, why it's there. <laughs> well, the, the, here's the issue. The issue is, if you look at all of our tributaries in the city, the Gowanus Canal, Newtown Creek, uh, there are many of them. Uh, only about 48% of them actually you can use for any form of recreation. The question is, why is that? And it's because of a decision made a century ago to have a combined sewer system. A combined sewer system puts both the sanitor sanitary water, stuff from our toilets, and the rainwater, and the rainwater oh. in the same pipes. Now, it then processes all of that water in sewage treatment facilities. There are 14 of them around the uh -huh. city. The problem is we don't have enough capacity so that when it rains, even a tenth of an inch, we can't process it all. And so every year, two billion gallons of raw sewage gets dumped into our waterways. That is not only disgusting, but it is a waste of a wonderful recreational opportunity. So as part of this plan, what we've done is we've looked around the world at best practices, uh, so, and some of them involve investing more in infrastructure, mm. but some of them are much cheaper, much less effective. And what we discovered was in certain places in the world, like Holland, they're actually planting farms of shellfish, mm -hmm. which are fabulous at absorbing. Filtering the water. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Now, one of the questions is, is if you're going to create these shellfish or mollusk farms, how do you prevent Somebody's people? Somebody's going to farm them. For far, from, right. That's right. So we had to go one step further. <laughs> oh. And we had to search the world for the mollusk that would taste terrible and would be impossible to open. <laughs> That just gives you that's just an idea of the depth of analysis that well, you folks but, are doing. And that's what you've got to do. That's why, you know, we talked last week. You said, you know, is this just a blueprint? This isn't a blueprint. What are this you picking? Is, You're still picking on me for well, blueprints? Why go not? Ahead. Why go not? Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is a very, very detailed plan, much of which we can do on our own. We don't need state approval, any other approval. Wait a second. I wanted to continue like with the mollusks. <laughs> okay. You're so, not about going to tax no, my no, 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 no. Well, no, the fact that you knew all that stuff was pretty <laughs> remarkable. So you've got performance measurements in your implementation. Who who does the mollusk planting? Well, in, and the, in the case of the mollusk planting, the mollusk planting will be done by the Department of Environmental Protection, which okay. has re responsibility mm -hmm. for the cleanliness uh, of our waterways, is the delivery of our water. Uh, but the entire effort is going to be overseen by our newly created uh, Office of Long-Term Planning okay. and Sustainability. And I want to talk about that a little bit, too. And they will make sure that all the agencies are doing what they're supposed to be doing under the plan. Every year, they're going to issue a report as to how we're doing with respect to all of our 127 uh, different initiatives. We have in our book uh, where we expect to be by the time the mayor leaves mm -hmm. office and where we hope to be by 2015 to pick a, 
a next date right. beyond that. Right. And we're going to hold ourselves accountable and hopefully the voters and the civic groups and editorial boards and the people or the, or will the mayor hold, and his philanthropy well, mm -hmm. mayor and his philanthropy will hold uh, our successors accountable as well yeah well that's one of the, one of the questions that we very briefly alluded to last week and and that is the the nature of authority who does what and the permanence of it, you know it's extremely variable. When you guys came in, for example, the Museum of the City of New York was going to be in Tweed, but now it's the Department of Ed. So things can be reversed, and, and even things that people have invested a lot of money in and, you know, political chits, et cetera. Is, there, is that a concern, or you just you don't care? You're going to oh, get done what you have to get done? And... It, it's a big concern. Go ahead. And the way we best insulate it is to get as much done as mm -hmm. we can do now. And we believe that we can get underway every single one of these 127 initiatives before the mayor leaves office. When you say underway, I mean, even the creating of the, the authorities, the energy authority and the finance transportation We absolutely can. Authority. It's going to require state right. legislative right. approval. Right. But oh, assuming, we could, right. But assuming... We're not talking about odds here. You're not, you're, okay. We're okay. not you're, getting the odds okay. yet. But okay. assuming that we do get that state legislative approval, then yes, we can be well underway um, and the vast majority of these things don't require state legislative approval at all. They can be done by the city. And as what I mentioned, what percentage? I mean, I don't know if you. It's, know. A, it's about two thirds. Two or thirds so. can be done by the yeah, city. Everything like related the, the to parks and the pl schoolyards, parks, housing, the trees, the trees, everything related to air quality, water quality, a number of the other initiatives. Housing. The city itself the um, has a plan to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in saving energy mm -hmm. in its own buildings. That can all be done. That said. If we don't get the approval, for example, for the smart financing authority, including congestion prices, right. or to really help reform our energy market, there is absolutely no way we will ever achieve a 30% reduction in global warming emissions or the kinds of reductions in air pollution that are leaving so many of our children with uh, asthma. I, I want to move, to, I, I want to follow this. The, the New York Post uh, and, it, and a headline said, you know, apocalyptic city, apocalypse. If we don't do these, maybe not all 127 of them, but, but the core of these proposals, what does the city look like with a million more people mm. in 25 years? It will be, it'll be infinitely more unpleasant. It will be massive crowding on every bit of our transportation. Well, I don't think it'll be like that, but... <laughs> oh, okay. So it's getting really apocalyptic. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it will, That was the New York Post. Okay, right. Um, it will be the significant congestion on mm -hmm. virtually every route on our subway system. Every single crossing into Manhattan will be way above capacity. Our water will be less clean. Our air will be less Asthma clean. Asthma rates must. 2.7 million New Yorkers won't live within walking distance of a park. Um, the list goes on and on. Uh -huh. By 2015, if we don't act today, the, the people of New York City and the businesses of New York City will be paying $3 billion more a year for energy. Just as one example. So it's not apocalyptic. But what we will see is the quality of life in this city that we have worked so hard to build back from the disastrous 1970s will begin to slide back in ways that will make all of us very, very uncomfortable. Let's go to New York as the global capital and the, the, the challengers. Again, going to London, I mean, Blair was sort of a perfect choice to close the mayor's event on, on Earth Day. London's booming. London's doing what you talked about in terms of congestion pricing. It's doing this master planning, great uh, uh, public participation. What's the threat? What is the threat? Well, the threat is, is that we are in a global competition for businesses, for visitors, 
uh, to some extent for the best and brightest for talent which power our city in many ways. So we could lose that if we, we don't. Absolutely and what you're seeing for example in financial services is that we are beginning to lose it. That's why the mayor and Senator Schumer uh, mm -hmm. did a report on our competitiveness mm -hmm. in financial services. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that, all that competitiveness, the biggest factor in success is quality of life. Mm -hmm. And if we don't improve ours, we are not just going to be seeing greater competition from London, but from other cities in Europe, cities in Asia, like Singapore, which is very, very progressive in terms of mm -hmm. the Absolutely, way it thinks right. about quality of life. Not Shanghai, progressive in other ways, but certainly, right. Right, Sh right. Shanghai. Right. Uh, Hong Kong, mm -hmm. I mean, Shanghai, my brother, for example, lives in Shanghai. Every time I go there, there are new parks everywhere. There are new buildings everywhere. There are new mass transit everywhere. And that's not to say we're going to be competing with them in everything. Mm -hmm. But this is a world in which cities are thinking so deeply about their futures that we can't afford to sit back and watch the competition eat our lunch. And the mayor, in, in closing his uh, speech, said essentially, if not now, when? Uh, I think that's exactly the right question. Uh, th think about what we have in Mayor Bloomberg today. We have a mayor who never has been afraid to do the politically unpopular thing because he thinks it's in the best interest of the city moving forward. We have a mayor who is used to, from his business career, looking forward, sizing up competition, making tough decisions in order to beat the competition. And that's what he's doing here is he's saying, look, I've only got 980 some days right. to go. I'm riding high in the polls. It would be so easy for him to coast out of office uh, and have achieved an enormous amount. Right. But that's not what he's right. doing. He's right. saying, We've got real serious issues. I'm putting my credibility on the line by calling it like I see it and now proposing very specific. And if you've got better ideas, I'm happy to listen to them. But nobody thus far has denied the existence of the problems. Right. And also, if, uh, from a commentator's point of view, it makes him relevant. It inoculates him against latent duckism. He's talking about significant issues, not only here, but, you know, when he goes out and talks with Schwarzenegger about immigration or Jeb Bush and writing op-ed pieces. So there's, there's a larger agenda here. I mean, do we have sort of a, a, a new urban program here that th this mayor is looking at? at least this city with different eyes and different prescriptions, perhaps? I no. hate to sound like a political scientist. No, I, I think the reason we're doing this now is we have now fully recovered from the 70s. We have fully recovered from 9-11. Huge budget surplus. We now have an opportunity to really look forward. Mm -hmm. He's not doing this to make himself more relevant. He's doing it. But it, it has that effect. It may have that okay, effect. Go ahead. But he is doing this because he is a very pragmatic man who does a strategic analysis of his business, which is now the city, understands what the problems are, and has attempted to put forth a series of very real world, practical, feasible solutions that can not only maintain where we are but can give our children and grandchildren, as well as those of us who are still here decades in the future, a city that is greener and greater and is a model for a 21st century sustainable city. We cannot, we cannot, I think, overstate the significance of New York taking a lead. When we talk about reducing global warming emissions in New York City, we hope that we'll have the same effect on global warming around the world with other mm -hmm. cities that we've had, for example, by putting the smoking ban in, taking an unpopular stand, doing it here, and watching it flower all over the world. Who ever would have thought mm. that Italy and Ireland would be enacting smoking bans? I don't think anybody. But they did because we led here. So we're leading for ourselves, but we're also leading for the rest of the world. Okay.
Let's go back to the proposals. I love the proposals. <laughs> what was the proposal that sort of opened your eyes and, and, and brought a smile to your face when you found out about it? I mean, I, you, I, what interested you about this pro process other than just the, you know, the, the whole global nature of it? What tickled well, I, you? I don't think it was one thing that tickled me. I, the, to me, the real revelation was understanding how all of these things are completely interrelated. Mm -hmm. you know, the way in which we use land affects how many people we can have here. It affects how we move around. It affects how we use energy and how we pollute the air and water. And so the, the really the integrated nature of all these different systems to me is the most important thing. And how by doing what's right for New York City, doing what is economically right, what is environmentally right, how all of it can produce the single most important contribution, I believe, to reducing global warming that any city has ever undertaken. You take any big piece of it away, and that contribution goes down significantly. Mm -hmm. And that's just a fact. Even by having more people here, this is very interesting, maybe this is the thing that tickled me the most, by having more people here, by accommodating almost those million more people right. over the course of the next 20 or 25 years, we are in fact making an enormous contribution to reducing global warming. How is that? New York City is much more efficient mm -hmm. than the average for the United States. The average person in New York produces 29 percent less global warming emissions, 29 percent of the global warming emissions that the average person does in the rest of the United States. Well, that makes me proud. So somebody coming here and being able to accommodate them here mm -hmm. makes an enormous contribution. By accommodating those 900,000 people, we actually save twice as much global warming emissions as San Francisco produces in a year. City, That's a nice comparison. Cities are the answer, and New York can well, cities be. Cities have always been the and answer. City and New York can be the most important answer, but only if we act. We can't sit back and just say, you know, things are going to be fine. They're not. And we play a role in a global ecosystem as well. Okay, I'm, I'm a genie, and I can guarantee you three wishes. Which three of these proposals do you see as absolutely fundamental? If, sine qua non. If you don't do something about energy and our power plants and the way in which we use energy, there's no way you come anywhere near the global warming uh, target or the air pollution reduction target. Or the so, energy that we need. Or fact. the energy we need. What do we do? What, what well, do we our, do? our proposal is to create a... Uh, a new New York City Energy Board. Today, New York City has no authority over energy policy. And so what we have proposed is a new board uh, that would consist of the governor, who would have a veto, mm -hmm. uh, the mayor, and the utilities to plan out New York's energy needs. This sounds like a no-brainer. What's the problem? Uh, I don't think it is, but it's what that board does. And what that board needs to do is authorize NIPA, the New York Power Authority, mm -hmm. to use, to have power contracts to induce new developers mm -hmm. of power plants, but those power plants have to be clean. Yep. Okay, so that's one piece of it. The other thing it has to do is it has to work with Con Ed. Con Ed right now has no little incentive to actually reduce demand for energy because they get paid based on how much energy they sell. Right. Okay. We need to reduce energy, and we, we waste energy in many, many different ways that we outline mm -hmm. in this document. So we need to incentivize them by having them get paid based on how much they save. And if we do that, we think we can create a series of incentives through a new entity that Con Ed would play a significant role in that would provide people with the means to invest in energy-saving okay. devices. Okay. So that's, so you, that's one wish, big area. That's wish that's one. Not, but I'm not going to say it's one, two, or three. Okay. The, the, other, the, three. the other one is we've got to do something like this smart financing authority, which will raise money from congestion pricing 
from a city commitment as well as a matching state commitment to fund the $30 billion hole we have to truly giving us a 21st century mass transit infrastructure so that we're not all congested, which is where we will be. And so to me, we need to do both. If we don't do those two things, we won't come close to hitting our air quality targets or making the contribution to global warming just, that we I need mean, to. Just, just going home to Queens for a bit, how did you measure the transportation utilization access? I mean, all this gets factored in, and now from this you're going to produce operations that, that facilitate mass, you know, Ab yeah. express there's, buses. There's a lot of data. There's a regional transportation entity that has a massive model of how all the flows on the subways and the rail lines and the roads um, all work. And you can actually model out changes to that network, um, both big and small. You gotta be small. careful with computer models sometimes. Well, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I had, uh, I had to, I'm <laughs> that's, sorry. That, that's true, but Go ahead. Uh, spent a lot of time with this. It's a massive, massive model, and so we've tried all sorts of different mm -hmm. scenarios, and that's how we arrived at the list of the 20 or so projects that right. we think can significantly Because there are all points of, uh, I, I know Queens best, Queens and Brooklyn, and I know about That are poorly really, served by Really on the serve. And, and we've looked at those, are right. li literally 22 areas uh -huh. of the city that have much higher so they have, they have, in a sense, a priority on attention yes, and dollars. Yes, absolutely. And we will be going out to each one of those communities. Okay, so that's your, that's a second wish. That's your the third, second one. Third wish. Mollusks, of course. That mollusks work, and we clean up all of the call, clean up all the waterways with just. Oh, you cheating! With a relatively, uh, what would be the third one? I don't know. Um, but the the three biggest contributions to global warming are transportation, uh -huh. uh, buildings, and uh, power plants. Okay. We, we've touched on this at various times, and I'm still skeptical. How do you pay for all of this? It depends on the individual piece. All the Talk about all the, as I said, on the energy side, it requires a relatively small increase in the system's benefit charge, which we think, for example, for the average household uh, who pays $120 a month today for energy of maybe $2 okay. a month. That and that would be dedicated to what? to investing in... Oh, into this authority, okay. It, into the, the entity that will help reduce demand and lower prices. Okay. We think, by the way, for that $2 people invest up front a month, that by year four, you'll get all your money back in energy savings, and by year seven, you'll be making 10 times you, your money. You okay. sell this good, go ahead. Well, no, you know, we've, we've done the work. Right, uh, right. You know, obviously markets change, but based on everything we see today, that's one. The $30 billion investment in mass transit, yeah. all paid for through a city contribution, which we're going to make out of our budget, matched by a state contribution, which they haven't agreed to do yet, and congestion pricing proceeds all go into the Smart Financing Authority, all paid for. Everything else... That but that requires, depends on these other prior pieces actually being in place. Yeah, we have to get okay. state approval. And, 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 if, and if that doesn't happen, what can we do within our purview? If, 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 Not if, much. If we don't come up with more money, then we can complain all we right. want about how our mass transit system is not what it ought to be, how our roads are congested, how it takes us to get, you know, from Flatbush Avenue, you know. Stop complaining okay. unless you can come up with something better. Come up, come up. There's a, okay. everyone up pretty much up. agrees with a $30 it. billion okay. dollar go go gap. So you disagree with all those pals out there who are saying that this is, you know, geographically and class biased and I all think that it, stuff? I, look, I think it can be great for almost okay. everyone. Okay. And you know, I hate to repeat myself too much, but since I'm sure some people weren't watching last week, go ahead. it really is only 5% of all New York City residents who for work drive into Manhattan. So we would have the tyranny of the 5%. You said you, it. I said it. You, you said it. Who's going to manage, sort of my last question is, who's going to manage all of this? This Office of Long-Term Planning and Sustainability, I mean, does it have the requisite size, it, staff, and influence with the agencies? I mean, this has got to be the whip. What we, have, what we have found is for these complex multi-agency efforts that we undertake, where you have the direct authority of the mayor and the mayor's office 
things tend to get done. And so this will be an entity that has the direct authority of the so mayor. So it's got the juice. Absolutely. And as you will find out if you uh, read the book, and it's all online, by the way, at www. Mean, if I read the book, having I didn't read mean, I didn't the mean, book. I didn't, I didn't mean, mean you. I meant the larger you. The larger you. Okay, the larger you were attacking you. me again. Uh, you, can, you can get it online at www.nyc.gov slash planyc2030. It's all there. Uh, but, Use a color printer because it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Uh, but where all the money's coming from, who's going to do everything, is all laid out. And all the money that the city needs will be committed for in the budget that the mayor releases this week. This week? Yeah. When are you coming back to so we can grill you on this again? Pick a time. Six months? Six months sounds good. Six months. Okay. A pleasure. Uh, but, you know... I like wishing and hoping. I like, I like dreams. Creating the kind of city we need, you can't just talk about it. You actually have to do it. I agree. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.